The DHCP or Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol provides a standard for passing configuration information to hosts on a TCP IP network. It is not clear, isn't it? And that is why before this, we need to understand a few basic terminologies. Uh, then we will be ready to jump onto the DHCP option sets. So let's begin with that. So what is DHCP? So DHCP or Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol is a network management protocol used on internet protocol networks or IP networks whereby a DHCP server dynamically assigns an IP address and other networking configuration parameters to each device on the network so that they can communicate with other IP networks. And let's suppose you have an internet service provider for your internet usage and you have the devices that you want to connect to the internet using your ISP and that's your private network, isn't it? But these devices have an IP address that gets assigned by the ISP for its communication. And when you add a new device to your network, a new IP gets assigned to it. That is the same reason why you are able to talk to each other. If you want to experiment on this one, take an Ethernet hub and connect four devices using the Ethernet cable and connect the LAN connection or check the LAN connection. You will be able to talk to each other because of DHCP. And that is why we say that a DHCP server dynamically assigns an IP address and other network configuration parameters to each device on the network so they can communicate with other IP networks. The ISP has a connection to the DHCP server here which can fetch you an IP from its IP address database from its free IP pool for you to use. That is why you see the concept of BYOD or bring your own device. As with DHCP, it's very easy to configure devices. That is why it is called dynamic host configuration. So if not, you will have to manually configure an IP to the device and other host configurations as well. That's a very big overhead for the network administrators. So I hope you got the point here. Let's move on. So for a network to work properly, there are a set of network operations and configuration that help it to function correctly. And one of the main factors or protocols that helps the network administrator to manage a huge network is DHCP. The best part that I feel is that it automatically sends required network parameters for hosts to communicate properly over the network. So as DHCP is a protocol, it follows a pattern of request, response and acknowledgement. So let's suppose the host is your DHCP client and we have the DHCP server. So the first step is DHCP discover request, which is sent to the DHCP server. So in the first step, when we connect a device or host, it broadcasts a DHCP discover message over the Ethernet network to locate all the available DHCP servers. So that is the first part. The second step is DHCP offer. Here, the DHCP server sends out a DHCP discover offer message and broadcasts the network informations like IP address, DHCP IP, lease IP, NTP server details and all these things to the network itself. And once the client understands that yes, we have a DHCP server, that is in the third step, the host actually sends a DHCP request. That is for a third step with the IP that it wants to use. In the last step, the DHCP server checks if the same IP was the one that it had sent before in the broadcast. And if it is yes, then it sends the acknowledgement. So we have four steps here. The first one is DHCP discover, where the host actually tries to find out all the available DHCP servers. Then there is an offering made by the DHCP server. Then the host actually sends the DHCP request. Then the DHCP server sends an acknowledgement. So if you have to understand this in the simple terms, the host actually first asks, can you please give me an IP address? The DHCP server says, do you want to use this IP 192.168.22.23? The host says, okay, that's cool. Uh, are you sure I can use this? Then the server acknowledges by saying, yes, indeed, you can use it. So this is how the DHCP server and the client actually communicate to each other. It's simple, isn't it? Now let's talk about AWS DHCP option sets. So as I've already said this before, the DHCP provides a standard for passing configuration information to hosts on a TCP IP network. And there are configuration parameters that are provided by the DHCP server. So that can be like your domain name, domain name server, NetBIOS node type, 
NetBIOS name servers and NTP servers as well. And you can configure DHCP option sets for your virtual private cloud. But by default, you have it uh, configured when you create a VPC, but you can also create one for yourself. And now let's talk about some of the options that we have for the DHCP configuration. So the first one that we have here is domain name server. So we can have a configuration set to either Amazon provided DNS or to custom domain name servers if we want to provide that for our instances by which we can translate the DNS to the mapping IP address. For the domain name that we have, if you're using AWS or Amazon provided DNS, then for US East 1, you have to specify ec2.internal. And if you're using Amazon provided DNS in any other region, we have to specify region.compute.internal. Otherwise, we can use a custom domain name as well. Let's suppose I want to use it for Pytholic. I can have something like pytholic.com as well. So this value is used to complete the unqualified domain host names or the DNS host names. And for an example, if I want to cite here, like let's suppose you have private DNS names. So it can be like ip-private-ipv4-address.ec2.internal for US East 1. And it can be like ip-private-ipv4-address.region.compute.internal for other regions. Same way it goes for the public DNS as well. So you have ec2-public-ipv4-address.compute hyphen one dot amazon aws dot com for us east one and the same goes like ec2 hyphen public hyphen ipv hyphen address dot region dot compute dot amazon dot com for other regions and for the ntp servers we can have the ip address of up to four network time protocols servers that we have and if you don't know about what is an ntp server or ntp protocol i'll give you a small example and you can also read about that later so for example if you have 50 instances and they are a part of your network and if i ask you to change the time or check if the time of all the instances are synced or not will you do that manually no you won't right for the same reason we use network time protocol that keeps a synchronization between the times of the instances in the network these instances can speak to the ntp server to keep the time synchronized with each other for the netbios name server we can have the ip address of up to four netbios names servers so the instances running on the windows operating system have a netbios which which is the network basic IO system. If the DNS is dev.pytholic.com, then the NetBIOS name is dev. And if it is pytholic.com, then the NetBIOS name is pytholic. But then there is a difference between NetBIOS and the DNS. So DNS is more important and available for the connections over the internet, whereas NetBIOS is, is always available to the devices connected directly to it. And the fifth one that we have is NetBIOS node type. So for NetBIOS, we have various node types like uh, one is equal to B node that is for broadcast and two that is the P node that uses point to point communication and four we have that is called the multicast that is M node and eight which is H node or H node used as a hybrid of both B node and P node. That is basically your hybrid for broadcast and point to point communication and these are used to communicate to the NetBIOS server. Just like DNS has DNS server for name resolution, NetBIOS has its name server to register and resolve computer names to IP addresses. I know these topics may not be common for many of you out here, but please don't worry about this with respect to the exam. Just remember the option sets that you have with DHCP. And if you're interested, we can make a separate video on this, but for the exam, this is sufficient. So you must always remember we have options like domain name server, domain name, NTP servers, NetBIOS name servers, and NetBIOS node type.